Hi, this is Tim, and today we're going to talk about one shots or one shot risings, one shot fallings, and how they can be very useful for capturing specific events such as, say, homing an encoder to a switch, the leading edge of a part on a conveyor, or some very time sensitive event. So, we're going to create a new program for this. We are using our basic trainer, which is still wired for the getting started exercise. And we're going to create a new program. Now we're going to move fast through creating the program and downloading things like that because we have videos for all those and I'll put a link to them in the description. But we're going to create a new program. We'll just call it One Shot. And we have a 1763 MicroLogic Series B. So we're going to be using the green button to turn on and off the green light. Same button. This is sometimes called a flip-flop. We're going to use an XIC instruction of I colon zero backslash zero, which is that green button. And then we are going to use an ONS instruction. If you go over here under bits, you see you have our basic ones, you have our latches, and you have our three one-shot bits. And we're going to use the ONS one-shot bit. Now an ONS one-shot bit has one bit associated with it, and we'll just use B3 colon zero backslash zero. And let's just call that the green button ONS. We're going to turn on a binary bit as well, and let's just use B3 colon zero backslash one. Let's describe what this is. So this is going to be a pulse that is good for one scan in the end, and we'll go through how it is. But so let's describe it as I said, this pulse will be on for one scan based off of the B3 backslash zero backslash zero. Oops, E3 colon zero backslash zero ONS. All right, now we're going to add another rung. And in this one, we're going to look at that pulse bit that we just added. So that is going to be B3 colon zero backslash one. And we're going to put a branch around it. The branches are on that user tab. Just drag it across there. We'll do an XIC of that green light. The green light is O colon zero backslash zero. Now it's going to get a little tricky understanding, but where we just did an, an XIC of this green light, now we're going to do an XIO of this green light. So that's O colon zero backslash zero. And we're going to put another branch around that one. Now we're going to put an XIO of the same bit that we just had here. And then this is going to be an OTE to the green light. All right, now we're going to download this just to show how it does work. We already have programs on how to download, how to go online, um, and all that. So I'll put links to all those in the description. If we press our green button, our green light comes on. If we press our green button a second time, the green light goes off. We can press and hold this as long as we want. It only works one time. I'm not going to go through the details of exactly how this scan works because that would make for a super long and boring video and I probably would lose like 98% of you within the next minute. But I do want to go through a little bit of the ONS, and that's all we're going to worry about. We're going to function, focus right on here, because we already have videos on how the XICs and the XIOs work, but the ONS is one we haven't gone through. So same as always, the XIC says go look for one. Where? And I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? No. So then it gets to the ONS, and the ONS, similar to an OTE, does two different things depending on whether the conditions preceding it are true or false. So in this case, our ONS is false coming in. So a false ONS is going to go right a zero to its storage bit, which is right here, B3 backslash zero. So even though it's on the input side, it has output functionality. So it goes and writes a zero, and then it continues on with false conditions. So the OTE here is false. 
and a false OTE goes and writes a zero. Where? To B3 colon zero backslash one. So the moment we press the button, now you're going to, have to use a little bit of imagination as we do this one, is we're going to press our green button and then we're going to imagine that we're only going through one scan. So we press the green button. The XIC works exactly the same, says go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? Yes. So it is true. So this time the ONS is going to execute with true conditions. And a true ONS goes looks in its data storage bit. Well, at this very moment of this cycle, it had a zero in the storage bit. An ONS that is true coming in and has a zero in its storage bit will write a one to that storage bit and continue on with true conditions. So for that one scan, it's going to come over here to this OTE with true conditions and a true OTE says go write a one. Where? To B3 backslash one. Now let's go around to the next scan. And on the next scan, I haven't changed anything. My finger is still on the button. We're working really slow in time. So this is only the second time this EPLC has been scanned since we hit this button. The XIC instruction is going to go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash one. Do I have one? Yes. So it is true. So the ONS is going to execute with true conditions. And a true ONS goes and looks for a one. Where? In its data storage box. Does it have one? Yes. And an ONS that has a one in its data storage box continues on with false conditions. The OTE then is false, so it goes and writes a zero. Where? To B3 backslash zero. Now let's go through it one time when we let back off button. So the instant we let off the button, the XIC instruction says go look for a one. Where? An I colon zero backslash zero. Do I have a one? No, so it is false. So this ONS is going to execute with false conditions. And a false ONS says go write a zero. Where? To your data storage box. Then it continues on with false conditions. False OT says go write a zero. Where? To B3 backslash zero. Now I'm not going to go through the rest of this as far as how this works because you know enough now um, about PLC scan and about the XIC, XIO, and OT instructions. I really want you to study this one and really start to understand how this program works. This is a great exercise to figure out exactly how it does work. Now we're going to do something to help you understand the reason why you need to use the ONS instruction in certain applications such as this. We're going to copy rung one and then we're going to paste it down here at the bottom of our program and we're going to make some changes to it. Now guys this is important. This may be the most important part of this video. I don't want comments in this video saying that you burn up your output because of something you did wrong with this. So right away, first thing, let's go over here, go over to the green light in the rung we just pasted and change this to some type of internal data address. I'm going to use B32 and we're going to call this, this is what happens when you don't use an ONS. Very important guys, do that right now. We're going to change this program. So this B31, if you recall from rung zero, is what we're using with the ONS. Is we're going to address the green button instead of it. So instead of B3 backslash one, we're going to put in I colon zero backslash zero. And then right down here in this lower branch, same thing. It's going to be I colon zero backslash zero. Now, instead of the green light, since we're going to this B32 bit, we're going to change the green light here also. So B3 backslash 2. And right here, B3 backslash 2. So this is the exact same rung as this, only without the ONS. And please tell me that you did change and you're not using an output instruction here. Accept these edits, test them, and then assemble them. And then I always get my directions wrong, but 
either up here or up here, uh, you're going to see a card pop up that's going to take you to a survey with one simple question in it. And that is, in this exercise, is rung two's operation predictable or erratic? Pause your video, go answer that question, and come back. All right, so now we have it. We can see both of ours, and we're going to hit the green button and see what happens. So as you can see, pressing the green button once on our rung one turns on the green light. Pressing it again turns off the green light. But what's going on with rung two? Sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off. Doesn't seem to be a lot of rhyme or reason to it. Study this a little bit, see if you can figure out how it works, and then put your ideas down in the description. There are also two other one-shot bits you should be aware of. The one-shot rising bit and the one-shot falling bit. And this video is getting a little long, so I'm not going to talk about them in there, but I'm going to leave a link in the description that goes through exactly how those work. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.